Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on our our favorite show. The show we were all waiting for. The show we were wondering how many seasons we'll get. Seven, eight, ten? Yeah, we're talking about well, yeah, it's seven, eight, uh, seven, eight, ten seasons, something like that. We're, of course, talking about Green Arrow and the Canaries. And, uh, well, it's dead. <laughs> it, it's dead. We The canary went down the gold mine and it did not return. Must have been something down there. Didn't know if it just inhaled something or it got eaten. Something happened. So, yeah, I'm sure a good amount of you have seen something. I was going to leave this till tomorrow, but I thought, you know what? Let's just get it out of the way and uh, let's just talk about it because I think it's uh, something that, uh, you know... Uh, you guys know that I haven't been the the biggest supporter of it. I thought, you know what, you know, they wasted some stuff and everything like that. Um, so it's good that we finally have some closure. Even if you were looking forward to the show, which I'm fine with, it just wasn't my cup of tea. If you're looking forward to it, commiserations that the show is not going to get picked up and everything like that. But at least we have some closure. So yeah, Grinner and the Canaries, it was finally, and I have to emph emphasize finally announced today that it has been cancelled. There's no plans to pick it up. The backdoor pilot was a waste of time and everything like that. However, they did make sure to mention that the 100 prequel, I don't know what that show would be called, but the prequel to the show, The 100, which finished last season, similar to Arrow, that is still alive in some way, shape or form, but who knows what's going to happen with that. They might announce something in the next week or so in regards to the future of that as to whether it's going to happen or not. But yeah, as I said, they finally announced it, but why have they announced the cancellation now? Now, you might be wondering why do they hold it off for so long? You could theorize yourself in regards to that. But th the reason that they've announced the cancellation right now, um, about a week into 2021, a week into January, is that in about a month or so around this time, yeah, I'd say about within the next month to maybe six weeks, they're probably going to announce the new shows that are going to start filming pilots and also um, hand out the renewals for shows. They can even do it within January as well. Sometimes they do in January. Sometimes it's early to mid-February, but they'll announce like renewals. So like Stargirl gets season three, um, Batwoman gets season three, uh, Flash season eight, etc., etc., etc. They'll hand out those renewals and then they'll also announce that they're going to film pilots. Like So for the CWDC stuff, an example would be we're going to be filming Wonder Girl. Uh, the pilots are going to be filming in March and we're going to cast and everything like that. The same with that Naomi show. Once again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you usually get that around that February time because March is when they film the pilots. Late February and March is when they film pilots. So it's pretty much just getting this news out there right now before announcing all the new shows and the renewals of current ones. Now, the interesting thing with Greeno and the Canaries is that I think it was the I want to say it was Deadline or the Hollywood Reporter. One of the big trades said that um, Greeno and the Canaries was apparently in talks for it to air on both the CW and HBO Max Weekly. Like if they were going to do the show, that would be the model they would want to do. So I think it was maybe they didn't think it was going to be worth the time and viewership for just the CW to do it. But if they could cross over to HBO Max as well, then it might be worth their time. So this would be similar to what we saw with Stargirl last year, how it was on DC Universe and the CW. Now, I don't know which um, outlet would have got it first or if it appeared on the same day, the CW, HBO Max or Granite Canaries, but that, that was a plan that they had. And apparently that 100 prequel is still attached to potentially do that crossover or co-broadcast or simultaneous simulcast. Isn't that what it's called? A simulcast between the CW and HBO Max. So who knows what we'll do there. Now, obviously the... Uh, <laughs> The elephant in the room, uh, wow, they wasted so much of Arrow Season 8 trying to set this spin-off up, spin up that uh, I, back then, was saying, I don't see this going anywhere. I, I, don't, I don't understand why I would have that great of an interest. It's just going to be Arrow 2.0, but not as good. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't do it. You know, you wouldn't do it. It's just going to be the exact same, um, but in the future... Who knows if they even stay in the future past season one, and then it's just going to have not as interesting characters, especially not as an interesting lead. It was never going to work. It was never going to work. That was me personally. That's what I was saying. I don't see why they would pick it up. I don't know why there'd be that much of an interest. And look what happened. So they wait, they wasted around half, if not more, of Arrow season eight and large chunks of season seven. It's important to remember those flash forwards started in season seven. And yes, there was some connective tissue here and there. But season seven was really rushed to write out Felicity because I think she announced it late. So they never really tied it up properly. So it was a bit of a mess in season seven. And then I think we all know how much time up at, uh, time it ate up in season eight. 
Imagine if there was no setup for the spin-off. I said this on Twitter. Every episode that wasn't attached to setting up the spin-off in season eight was amazing. Like a like an eight and a half, nine in the case of episode one, ten out of ten. And every episode attached to setting the spin-off off, a uh, spin up, spin off up, the t- tongue twister for me. Um, that involved like heavy Mia, heavy William, everything like that was n- far from amazing. I'm not saying they were terrible, like two out of tens, but they were nothing above a seven, nothing above a seven. So in retrospect, you look back at it and go, wow, what were you thinking? And it's going to make watching or rewatching, especially Arrow season eight, but even season seven in parts, just annoying. Not like, oh my God, it's going to like, it's pain, but it's just going to be frustrating watching that going like, why are we wasting so much time on this? You know what I mean? Now, I do have to mention there's a bit of a dab on haters situation because I got so much hate for saying that I don't think the show was going to work. I did, I didn't like heavily criticize the backdoor pilot, but I was like, eh, it was okay, but it wasn't like the best seller and I got hate for it. And then I didn't like the finale either, the series finale for the most part. And I think that's because emotionally I checked out in crisis. But I just remember everyone on Twitter going, oh, look, Kat McNamara is tweeting about it and we'll get to her in a second because... Actually, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Anyway, whatever. Everyone would know I'm talking about her anyway. But everyone had mentioned, oh, Kat McNamara, Kat McNamara. She's tweeting about it. She's tweeting about it. It's happening. I'm like, okay. And like, they're trying to tag me and try to like intimidate me. And I was like, hey, just, I'm going to be right in the end. And look, I was. And also some people are going to say, well, didn't, wasn't there like an article that said it was confirmed to be picked up last year? I'm not going to mention it because even though I don't like the person, I, well, I don't hate him, but I, I definitely don't enjoy his presence. He's an idiot. Um, but the, there's like a, we got this covered sort of cosmic book news, similar sort of site that just pushes stuff for clicks. They did say that Green and the Canaries have been picked up at the time. Beth Schwartz to her credit said, uh, and she said she could have just ignored and gone along with it. Hey, it might help my cause because she would have got paid for it. Um, if the show got picked up, but she shot it down at the time and, uh, the person defended it saying, Oh no, I'm, I'm right. They're just denying it. Well, I don't know, is this a CW denying it right now? Because they've just said it's uh, not happening. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, like, like why didn't it happen? Was there like a big reason outside of like the CW just looked at the views and everything and it didn't work? Because it's very important to remember, I think outside of Crisis, it had the most views per episode. Outside the finale, it might've been. So I think every regular episode, except the finale, maybe? It maybe even it had more episode, more views in the finale, but the backdoor pilot of Greeno and the Canaries either had the most views in the season outside of crisis or just behind the finale, one of the two. So you could argue that analytics there and everything in regards to viewership and all that and ratings was good enough to say, Hey, we should give this show a shot. So based off that, and that they were good, why wouldn't it have happened? Now I've heard from a few different people about, I'd say about three or four. Um, and two of them are like journalists that work for like actual trades and everything like that around the issues with Greeno and the Canaries and both when they were doing the backdoor pilot and then after the fact, and even when they were actually just doing Arrow season eight in general. So the story around this, and I actually don't really put that much blame on the actress that wasn't too happy with the situation because in, at the end of it, I think she she was sort of put in the wrong or, or like the, the CW or the, the broadcasters were in the wrong because I think she was lied to um, or at least they didn't fulfill the promise. Maybe at the time she wasn't being lied to, but they definitely did not fulfill what they promised. So Kat McNamara, as I'm sure most of you would know, came into season seven of Arrow and was like a supporting character just in the flash forwards. So she wasn't a supporting character in the main part of the show, which takes up about two thirds to three quarters of each episode. She was in that tiny bit of each episode where she has a smaller role, where other characters in there are also in the present day, like Dinah, Roy and everything like that. They're in present day as well, but she's just locked in that future thing. So she came from being a, I don't know if she was the lead or at least the female lead on Shadowhunters to then being a supporting character in the minor role, uh, the minor um, setting of the show. So she's like a supporting character in a third or one quarter of each episode, which is tiny. So when that happened, I think everyone said it back when she got cast and she came into the show, I was like, that's a random like drop. Like, you know what I mean? Like random, Unless, like it's going to be set up and she's like, is a main next year, which technically she was, but at the time it was a bit confusing. It was, it was a long road just to then be a main alongside all these other people, or not even a main, like once again, probably still supporting, but just in the main 
area of the show. It felt weird. But from what I found out is that she pretty much signed on because she was promised a spin-off show. She was promised her own spin-off show. And based off the fact that they called her Black Star, that was her name, and that was like used in one episode, and that we never heard it again, but they went out of their way to give her a name of Black Star. I would assume that the show was meant to be called Black Star, and that was her character's name. Whether it was set in the future or not, who knows? That's for the, I guess, the people that pitched the spin-off potentially back then. But that's what she was promised. But as we know, what was Green and the Canaries? Well, it was an ensemble. It wasn't a lead. There was an ensemble with Katie Cassidy, Di- um, Juliana Hakavi, and Kat McNamara. So it completely changed what it was meant to be. So in that way, she technically probably thought she'd been lied to and wasn't, you know, f- her promise wasn't fulfilled or what, you know, they'd promised her wasn't being fulfilled, that she was going to have her own show where she's the lead. And apparently just, she sort of like tapped out and just made the... I think the whole production thing just a bit annoying and uncomfortable. And I don't think you can 100% put the blame on her, but she just had tapped out. Now, Kat McNamara did put out a um, a tweet, which I thought I'd saved, but I haven't. So I'm going to quickly type it up on my computer while I'm talking to you right now. So Kat McNamara, as you can see on the screen, put a tweet out saying, uh, saying, needless to say, I am heartbroken, would have loved to go on the journey with Mia Smoke. Thanks to everyone for their love and support. Hashtag Green Arrow the Canaries. Hashtag Elicity Baby. Hashtag Green Arrow at the CW. Now, I think she's mainly sad because I think she saw this experience to play this character in her own show as a big thing. And it sort of just went by the wayside. Now, I think they might have sort of um, met her in the middle and made her Green Arrow for this show. Um, Green and the Canaries, because I think she was probably just meant to be Black Star. Um, hence why they gave her their name back then. But I think they sort of met her in the middle. It's like, hey, look, it's going to be ensemble, but technically you are the Green Arrow of Green and the Canaries. So you are like sort of like front and center, but it is, it is still ensemble. And I think she just still wasn't on board with that because she'd been promised something different. Now, will the actual like 100% truth come out, like all the details and everything like that. You never know. Like I'm, I'm assuming most of the information that was fed to certain sources were from set. So will we find out? That's for us to wait and find out, obviously, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all to talk about. Greeno and the Canaries. It's, it's done. It's dusted. We can move on. There's some closure there. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like on it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on what we went over and everything like that. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.